Hello, hello, this is Paolo with Bark. Let's talk about setting up a Bark Home for the first time. The Bark Home is a little box that you plug into your home router. Once set up, you can filter the internet and set screen time schedules for all devices connected to your home network. You can even use it to monitor iPhones and iPads, but that's gonna be covered in more depth in a future video. Today, I'm just gonna show you what to do when you're unboxing the Bark Home and setting it up initially. Check your router is listed as compatible. You'll find this link in the video description. Have the Bark Home device on hand. Have all of your family's devices turned on and connected to the Wi-Fi, or as many as you can get. And consider starting this process during a quiet time when your family isn't actively using their devices. Now, when you open the box to gather your supplies, you'll find the Bark Home device itself, a power cable, and an ethernet cord. These cables will be connected to the respective ports on the Bark Home device itself. Then the other end of the power cable goes into the wall outlet, while the other end of the ethernet cable goes into the LAN port of your home router, L-A-N port. If you're not sure what your router is, they come in a few shapes and sizes. Try checking the bottom or back of the device in question. If it has ports that look like this, it's likely your router. If it has a coax cable in one of the ports, it may just be a modem. Some families have just one device that is both a modem and a router, and other families have a modem provided by the internet service provider and a router that they connect to that modem for Wi-Fi. You can always reach out to your internet service provider for help in identifying which of your devices is your router, which is your modem, or if you have one device that performs both functions. Other routers are called mesh systems and they usually look like a hockey puck like this, though not always. If you have multiple mesh routers around your home, it's good practice to power down the mesh network's satellite routers while leaving the main mesh router up. The main mesh router is the one connected to your internet service provider or modem. And after the first time activation of Bark Home is successful, you can then power on your mesh satellite routers again and keep using your mesh network. Okay, so we've now connected the Bark Home's ethernet cable to your router and made sure that if you have a mesh network that the satellite units are powered down. Now, wait a few minutes for Bark to settle in. While waiting, watch the LED lights of the Bark Home. There's two Bark Home models. You can tell the difference between them just because one has three LED lights and another has two LED lights. The Bark Home that has three LED lights will tell you when it's ready to pair when it looks like this. Whereas the Bark Home with two LED lights will tell you it when it's ready to pair when it looks like this. And once the lights look like that, find a device connected to your home Wi-Fi, like a computer, tablet, or phone, and visit detect.network or you can scan the QR code on the bottom of the new Bark Homes. It does the same thing. If all goes well, you'll see some general onboarding and an option to create or log into a Bark account. If you don't make it that far, check out our troubleshooting guide linked in our video description. However, if you've successfully paired the Bark Home to your account, you'll continue using the Bark site or Bark Parent app to manage your devices. You want to start identifying and renaming devices so you can set up the app and site blocking rules you want. The easiest way to do this is to grab the device in question. For example, let's use your personal parent phone. Go to thisdevice.network on a browser on that device, and there you can easily rename it to dad's iPhone, for example, and assign it to a group like ignored. Then repeat for your family's other devices that are around and connected to the Wi-Fi like smart TVs, gaming consoles, their phones, etc. After you're done identifying and assigning devices for the day, you'll continue on and land on your parent dashboard. By default, any newly detected devices that connect to your home Wi-Fi later on will send you a push notification via the parent app like this. You can also see them under in-home Wi-Fi unmanaged in your parent app. There, you can assign them to a new profile to set specific rules or ignore them so that they get zero web filtering rules applied to them. This is great for routers, networking devices, smart thermostats, smart security systems, and that sort of thing. If you've assigned a device to a profile, just go home, tap on the profile, 
and then edit their default rules. You can also create routines like bedtime, school time, or free time that change rules on a schedule. These rules block the internet to categories of apps and sites or individual apps and sites. You can allow the games category but block Fortnite specifically or vice versa. If needed, you can even add individual sites to be blocked or allowed under custom content. Keep in mind that because networking activity gets cached or queued, it can take a few minutes for rules changes to take effect. During the first time setup, it may take up to 15 minutes for Bark Home to settle in on your network. Once settled in, Bark Home should not have any noticeable impact on your speeds. However, if you experience disruptive and unusable internet while Bark Home is in place, chances are that there's something up with your router settings and we'll be happy to help. Contact us at barkhome at bark.us with your router model and descriptions of the issue. In the meantime, check out our other videos and discover what you can do with your Bark Parent dashboard.